how are you? Let's <laughs> jump right in. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah. I gave this some thought. I didn't make a whole lot of notes. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I figured Spontane of, spontaneity is good. So <laughs> exactly. some of the best things are like, you know, off the cuff. Um, yes. Yeah. I had one of those uh, the other day with uh, Nikki Bullock. Oh, it did too. It was like, actually it was the other day. It was probably like last summer. We went to Starbucks and talked for like, it seems like an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, she made that movie, Blind Justice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's pretty cool. She made a movie. Her direct, I guess she directed it. Yeah. Like helped a, make it, I think. Right. Ton of stuff. So That's cool. Well, I, I've texted her every now and then, um, you know, saying, hey, you need to, I want you to have, be on the podcast and all that. But anyway, that's another story. We can talk yeah. about that. <laughs> well, this is not her story today. This is your story today. I just love my actors from my, uh, from my thesis experience. Oh. So I like to keep up with them. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I can't say I was in something national. Again, I'll tell you that offline. <laughs> I'm under NDA not to say what I was in. So. Oh, really? Wow, fancy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had a, it's kind of weird, like, I've had a few things that are like, were like nationally aired, so, but anyway. Are they like in post-production or? Well, no, they've all, the they've aired, um, I don't, do you remember uh, the one, I think I talked to you about uh, Murder Made Me Famous, that's on the Reels channel. That's familiar. Yeah, that one I was in, I was the park ranger who caught Jerry Burns. So that, um, I looked that up, that was probably the, one of the first big things that cable channel is in like 70 million households. So it's kind of bizarre. That's, cool. That's a lot of viewers with a lot yeah. of eyeballs on you. <laughs> exactly. And it was short, but anyway, again, I, I can link to that stuff because I'll have to try and remember to write this stuff down. People are be like, I want to see that little clip that you're in. I keep waiting for somebody to go familiar like, yeah. <laughs> like you know like they it would, it would have to be like i just watched this or i just yeah. saw that and then i'm at the grocery <laughs> store and i'm like that kind of looks familiar what did yeah. i see that guy before <laughs> oh it was like a half an hour ago on haven't yeah. had that moment yet so <laughs> we'll see how it goes it's coming yeah well you never know i mean <laughs> right now it's kind of one of those things it's just still fun so and that's good so what do you so what are you doing these days? Like, oh, um I am both working and um mothering. So mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I had I had a child since the last time we at least saw each other in person. So she's now twenty one months old. Pennsylvania just kind of reopened mm -hmm. like a cup like a week or two weeks ago. And so I've been at home with her a lot. Um which is cut into my work time. But when I, when I do get a chance to work, um, it's, I've been doing a lot of illustration, editorial and children's books, primarily because I do have to spend so much time with my daughter right now. It just works out that it's a lot lower maintenance than like video work is. Right. <laughs> so oh, yeah, so sure. right now I've kind of, I wish I was doing more video and film stuff, but as she gets a little older, I think, and we just, uh, recently found out I'm, I'm pregnant with our next one. Oh, congratulations. So like 12, 12 and a half weeks. So early, kind of early in that. So I, I kind of want to get, I don't know, have a little ambition to get stuff done before that one comes along. Right. Now. So I have what, you know, six months left yeah. <laughs> to like pack it in. But I enjoy, you know, I, I started doing a monthly column mm -hmm. um, with Coast Monthly Magazine, which you may be familiar with. Um, it's what? kind of golf coast texas living lifestyle magazine and i talked <laughs> i talked to the editor into giving me a um kind of like a one-page feature where oh, i nice. do i focus on um it's obviously it's a big birding area and so i love birds i've loved my dad's a bird watcher his mom was a bird watcher like we're all just big bird people <laughs> okay. so when i lived in galveston i like one of the things i miss about it you know now that i live on the east coast was is the the nature like the bird watching and everything and so i every month i focus on one species of bird that mm. either lives full-time or migrates through the area and there's like hundreds so i like have no shortage of material <laughs> oh yeah I bet. um so i said yeah well, i'll do an illustration of one every month and write a little fun things you should know kind of blurb with it so it's like mm -hmm. 140 words but it's kind of nice to say I write for a magazine <laughs> in addition to illustrating for it, but it's just a lot of fun because they, they let me do whatever 
whatever yep. I want, you know, and, um, you know, I try to find fun facts for people to learn about different birds and stuff. So, well, you can have fun doing fun. almost anything. I think that's a big thing for, I mean, whatever you're doing, but for creative work, especially like having fun. And like when I, when I teach like mixed media classes and such on occasion, like I tell my students, like, if you're not having fun making it, then people aren't going to have fun looking at it or um, listening to it or whatever. And I said, when I mean, when I say fun, I mean, like, there's some kind of gratification for you as the right. creator in it. And it may be a very serious kind of somber tone of work you're doing. But it's that sense that you're getting out of it what you need as a creator, which is, you know, a selfish way to look at it. But that's kind of your job is to tap into that, that thing that you need to get out of you. you know? right. <laughs> so, um, you know, whether it's fun or it's just expressing something that you need out there, you know, that kind of fulfillment is what I always tell my students, like, it takes practice sometimes when, you know, if you're not in the right mindset, you have creative block or whatever you want to call it, like just kind of clearing your head so that you can say like, what do I, what do I want to do? Like, what do right. I love and how can I make that channel into this thing? So mm -hmm. I hope it helps them. That's one of those it things. Helps me. I do it all the time. I get stuck. I get stressed. And I stop and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not I'm hating what I'm doing. Like, that's bad. The work is going right. to turn out bad. So I have to stop and like sometimes start over completely. And, you know, if I'm lucky, my computer crashes and I have to start <laughs> over anyway, which right. happened to me a couple of weeks ago. You know, like you just have to, to clear your head a little bit. And it's hard these days, you know, mm -hmm. with so much bad stuff going around in society, but, you know, it's necessary, especially as yeah. a creative person. Yeah, try not to let the work turn into work. That's right. probably the phrase you're yeah. looking for. Yeah. You're like, yeah. and there, you know, as well as I do, there are things you start, and you're like, oh, this will be fun, and then it's fun, and then as it goes, <laughs> you're kind of like, oh, at the end of it, like, yeah. I'm going to finish this, but it's I'm just going to grind this out because I have yep. to. I have a sunk cost into this project, and now right. I have to finish it. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. I know sure. exactly what you're talking about. So I think that's a constant, something to constantly be aware of you know, as a creative person is like, you know, am I, am I putting myself into this or am I letting it run me over? <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, it's, it's easy to fall into the wrong way of working. Yeah. If you're having fun, everybody else will have fun. Well, let's talk about landfall a little bit. Yeah. That's how we met. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's a funny story. And I know you wanted to talk about diversity. And I, t I tell this story sometimes because you said you wanted a diverse cast and I remember, <laughs> I remember e emailing you. See, I'm so shiny in this video. I'm going to get some makeup for next time. <laughs> I was like, okay, six foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> you know, and I was I, like, I, perfect. I, yeah, perfect. That's the most diverse guy. Right. I, I, I said, well, you know, if the ethnicity changes, you know, let me know. I believe that was basically what I put in there. So yeah. Like, hey, you're here. It's local. Like I meet all the requirements, but you know, I, I'm like, cool. I respect it. But you know, if you change your mind, let me know. Yeah. So you can go and from that, there. You can do yeah, your, so your side of the memory. That the way that went was um, one of, I guess my favorite TV show ever of all time is sex in the city. And ironically, it's not the most diverse show out there, which is like an, yeah. a known fault of that show that the actors have talked about. But anyway, that's part of the irony of this story is that there's a scene with a cop who, um, you know, is, is interacting with all four of the girls. And he just kind of has this sardonic, jaded attitude about him. I just had this image of, of somebody like that, just that satirical, jaded personality who would be who would come into the story as a also as a cop and be a little bit of comic relief in a story that's otherwise pretty pretty heavy pretty kind of you know dark comedy if anything but it's mostly drama so i sent you that that clip of that cop and that that scene and i don't know you just fit that image in my head and you kind of you sent me an, a, well, i think a couple of audition mm -hmm. um tapes and you know i just thought that's the guy like <laughs> yeah, right? he's got that right um the tone that you had and the sense of humor that you brought to it, I think, uh, fit really well. Thank you. And with the other actors too. So, um, I mean, overall, like, I'm very proud of the fact the cast is, was like 85% ethnic and mm -hmm. racial minorities. And I think like 85% women, you know, female cast as well. But 
you know, part of diversity is like everybody. <laughs> right. And so like, I wasn't afraid to have a couple of, you know, Caucasian actors right. in there. I knew you, I had um, Nikki, the other Nikki, who was one of the main characters actually. And so, you know, it just happened that way. And I, got, I was very lucky because when I put that ad out, the cast and call for it, I didn't have a lot of time because it was a student project <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you know, just the number of people who came out and a lot of them happened to be, I guess it was mostly a mix of African-American and Hispanic or Latina with a couple of it, like mixed race people in there, but it was just like a, just a beautiful, diverse group of people, mostly women. Mm -hmm. um, and they just, you know, they had a nice chemistry with each other and you, you know, you and had, uh, just brought a lot of humor into it, which was really nice. A little bit of seriousness at the end, you know? Right. <laughs> I, I just, uh, very thankful for the group that you all formed. And, you know, I, I kind of say to people like, the story of it itself, you know, it's, it's weird. It's a multimedia story, like it's experimental. So it's a mix of film and il photo illustration, kind of graphic novel style illustration. And so, if, you know, it doesn't really fit neatly in a category like mm -hmm. short film or, just graphic novel like it's both things and it needed to be both things to me but, you know I just felt like it was exactly what it was supposed to be <laughs> right. you know as it was the story online the website where it lives like that's my thesis project but at the same time like if, if I could take a picture of the cast which we were all never in the same place at the same time right. so I couldn't <laughs> but I should probably put together like a photo collage or something but the picture of the cast and crew together I think it ended up being like 50 people it took to make that thing happen. Mm. <laughs> and like that picture that doesn't exist, like that's my thesis project is like all of these people and all their kind of diversity and, and talent. Like that was my thesis. That's the thing I'm most proud of. Yeah, that would be nice if uh, you had like maybe cast photos, at least we could uh, put I together. Like I could still have, um, you know, people's audition photos and such and obviously stuff from the footage and the you know the photos that were taken so I really should put together a we call it like an ensemble <laughs> right image of everything and especially like nowadays with all the racial commentary that's going on I'm proud of that cast mm -hmm. of what you guys were and what you did and and like how you looked in a way like not in a superficial way but how like it was just it race wasn't an issue in the story necessarily it was just that was the way I saw the story and that was like right. the people I wanted to tell the story through and and it just you know it just worked out really nicely so anyway that that non-existent photo of all those all the people and you guys just like I think about it every day like I just I want to do it again yeah right <laughs> we need more of that you know obviously especially now like just the visibility of seeing people of color out there and just mix like a mix of people together and it not being a story about race and racial tension. Right. It couldn't be, it could be, but just that that could be the norm. That sure. could be just what we see right. and maybe life would imitate art, you know? Yeah. I, the only thing that I'm, I'm bothered by when people kind of bring that up is when they start, it's kind of like we're, uh, teaching you, you know what I mean? Right. Where, and you know that there's a point being made and you're like, well, now you're using this as a teaching yeah. construct. You're not really servicing the film or whatever. Right. You know, and like, we're doing this on purpose to, I'm like, no, it needs to be like any other part of the film be organic. Yeah. You know, there's a, a little quip Again, this is a Sex in the City reference because a lot of what I know, I just know. And if you're really just well. joining us, welcome to the City Podcast yeah, exactly. with Christina. I just Rob. I know a lot about like the production and everything. And, right. Um, there is Blair Underwood, mm -hmm. um, an Af African American mm -hmm. actor, yep. plays um, one of Miranda's boyfriends at one point, and it came up in news and interviews that he was actually offered an earlier part for another African-American character earlier in the story that was Samantha's kind of fling. And he turned it down because he said, I don't want to be the black curiosity <laughs> right? <laughs> because it was more of like a one episode type thing. Whereas the character he, he actually did play later carried over many, it had a little arc happening. Right. And um, when they offered him that role, the role he ended up taking, he said, is it a thing that he's black? And yeah. they were like, no, not really. He just happens to be 
right. guy that Miranda's dating and he, yeah, he's black. And, you know, they, they say that in the show a couple of times, but it's not like right. the reason she likes him or it's not a, a thing. Yeah. Um, so he just kind of is a character in the story. And like, that's what I would hope things I create kind of create that kind of like naturalness. Cause I think we need to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Cause like you said, you don't want to shove it in people's faces. I think, cause they, you have to assume your audience is very intelligent and right. they, they get it and they don't need like a didactic shove in the face of, of a moral or something like that. And I just love it when shows, you know, have, have diversity, but it's not, but it's just part of the fabric of what the show is. Like yeah. It's not the thing. It's not the thing it revolves around. It just is, you know? Well, I was thinking of a scene. I'm going to, the fanboys are kind of going to kind of love this here. And this will probably be some <laughs> discussion, but uh, there's that scene in the Marvel movies where Captain America comes back and he's old and he gives the shield to uh, Anthony Mackie. And I'm going mm-hmm. to, uh, I'm escape. Then this is horrible that his character names <laughs> escaping me at the moment but he passes the shield to them. I'm like, see, now that makes sense within the story. Yeah. I know what you're doing, you know, with the, the, the diversity. It's like, oh, now we're going to have a, I'm going to say black and white and Asian. It's I'm going to <laughs> use some politically incorrect terms. Um, but I'm like, now I, plus it's shorter to say. <laughs> brevity, it's just a shorthand. Yeah. Um, I like, I see what you're doing with that but see that makes sense within the context of the story, yeah. like perfect sense, you know? Yeah. So that like, that's the kind of thing I like to, I like to see, not like, you know, they're sitting around like, Oh, what character could we make a different race or sex or age yeah. today? And they're just like, you know, jamming yeah. it in there. Like they're checking a box. Yeah. And I think it'll get easier over time. Um, you know, as you start to see more people of color in highly visible roles you know hopefully I think we're I think we're way behind the times on that honestly like I remember I I always think growing up I grew up like in the 80s and 90s and most of the shows I watched on tv were black families and Mm -hmm. um so I watched 227 I watched amen I watched you know family matters Cosby show different world living single Ooh, like all I don't these shows. Say Cosby anymore oh, yeah. I know I know it hasn't aged well but right. I did at the time when it was before all that um and I mean I, I can't even remember all of the shows Martin was a big one too mm-hmm. and it was just such a normal part of the landscape of like sure. television entertainment and um and it's like it disappeared it's like all of a sudden it was a desert right. <laughs> of like no diversity in TV. And I think now that we're kind of getting back into a golden age of television with, you know, Netflix and Hulu and everybody getting into the game Mm -hmm. where there's a lot more competition, there's a lot more content being created, I think, just sheer quantity that um, there's, there's just more available roles and more, just more variety, I guess. And so I hope, I think that that helps a lot and you end up with cool shows like Orange is the New Black where, I mean, it's Mm -hmm. crazy diverse cast <laughs> yep. it's like mostly women and it's just amazing stories and you know I think you know I hope we see more of that considering like I just it blows my mind how many like original shows like Netflix does mm-hmm. and Hulu does and Amazon does now and I can't even remember all of them but um, it's great you know it creates a little bit of competition it creates a lot of room to experiment and to grow and I think we kind of need to get back into that oh yeah well, that yeah, landscape. there's a lot of stuff out there and, you know, there's been shows where uh, like, oh, that's a cool show. That's really good. And they're going to go for, I watch a lot of sci-fi stuff. Yeah. Uh, so Killjoys is on sci-fi channel and uh, the female lead on there. Again, I'm just so, so bad with names this morning. <laughs> just edit it back in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But she ended up being in, uh, in Ant-Man in the, in the Marvel movie. So she went from, you know, not a huge show on sci-fi to that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was a lame story because I can't remember her name. No, it's all right. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is neat to see, you know, uh, people taking chances and uh, yeah. YouTube stuff going on on YouTube. Like uh, there's short sci-fi films on YouTube that are like 7, 12, 20, 30 minutes long. Yeah. I want to get back to yours with that, though. I think it'd be yeah. cool if you took landfall and i think i've said this before like made that into a short yeah i think you you 
turned a lot of it into the graphic art yeah that we had video for that i think there's probably maybe enough video you could film like a back story episode of some pieces that didn't make it into the final project yeah. that you could have another episode so to speak that's pure video that's true like the other thing i thought is just having an episodic episode episodic series I love episodic TV, you know, mm -hmm. um, even whether you watch it in a binge format or whether you go with the, one, you know, one show a week format, I think um, it allows for a tremendous arcs in the storyline, character development, all that gives it room. But people, you know, like me and a lot of others with a shorter attention span for right. media and also just like I'm very sensitive. And so I can't only take in so much of a story at one time mm -hmm. before I'm like, okay, I need to process all this. So I think it would do well because there are so many characters in it. There's so much to mine there still that I really don't feel like it's done. Like you said, I think it's something else. And I've toyed with everything from a novel to just a screen, a full screenplay, like mm -hmm. a feature film, like screenplay, right. which I could, which I could easily do with the material that I have. But my heart really is in like episodic TV. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think just the era that we're in now with entertainment, you know, TV's like the new film <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like, it's just a, a tremendous, great form of art now, again, thank God, because it kind of, like I said, had a, had a lull there for a little while. But now with the streaming services, it's just this, it's just this great platform now. Growing up, like, watching TV so much of my childhood, like, that's just kind of the way my mind processes stories, too, right. and creates them, is I want to take it in pieces and kind of, be able to focus on certain parts of the story that come together overall, but break it into parts, I think. So Same. it could be an episodic TV series. I mean, yeah, I'm hoping. I, <laughs> I think you should look at what you have, like already in the can, so to speak, yeah. and actually put together a sh uh, maybe even a few shorts, depending on what you could get yeah. out of it. Like, and yeah. just throw those Take up on YouTube. Take a look at the footage. So, um, I'll probably end up editing a lot of this down. I've, I've yeah. kind of... Uh, I was going to mention that earlier, um, enjoy editing and I call it mm -hmm. like boiling it down, yeah, like you're making I love it editing too. richer, like you're taking all the good part and you're boiling mm -hmm. off the excess water. And by the end of it, you know, the pieces are like, eh. but by the end of it, <laughs> it's pretty good because you've condensed it yeah. down and whatever flavor there is, you've, you've yeah. concentrated. It's very gratifying um, experience. Yeah. Like on your, when I did your trailer episode, I, I don't know if you noticed or not, I actually look at the waveforms on the voices and any little section that's like a 0.6 second pause, wipe it. Oh, really? Wipe cool. It, wipe it. And then so, you know, your original thing that you sent to me might have been a minute and six. Yeah. And I cut it to like 48 seconds. Wow. You know, there, and there's another one where the guy says, um, and, uh, and then I did the same thing. I take yeah. out little moments of silence, you know, I mean, right. I leave some in, I mean, it's not, it, it sounds natural, but like, if, like, let's say I was telling you this sentence and then this happened and it's it, but in the, in the middle there was like, um, and so what did, oh, right. <laughs> so anyway, and so that, that bit where they're like, oh, right. So anyway, yeah. like I'll cut that out. So yeah. it makes you sound like you're totally together. Yeah. You said this nobody would know long. otherwise. Exactly. <laughs> like, this one big long thing. <laughs> and you're like, wow, she really just go back and listen. So eloquent. <laughs> yeah, right. She just had her ideas in order. And I think on his, I, I did like maybe I used a piece from over here to make it flow into that part better. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just little tiny things. Yeah, that, it's a science. I, yeah, I don't even think he noticed because when I sent it back to me, he said, yeah, that's my trailer or something like no man i cut out like 15 percent of this and yeah. slightly moved one or two yeah little. well that's the thing is if you do it well people don't notice yeah so he you know that's good that he was kind of like oh it's the same thing I'm like no <laughs> it yeah, just sounds normal cool. though right. that's the goal <laughs> that's a whole video in itself like here's the yeah. original now visually look at it side by side because i use uh imovie oh yeah i love yeah. imovie yeah i use yeah, it for great. audio <laughs> Yeah, audio it works. Yeah. Because you can see everything. Mm -hmm. You can see when there's a lull and et cetera. Um, there's other stuff out there and maybe I'll get smarter on them, but I'm like, I think <laughs> it works for this. Cause it, yeah, it's really, it's a good program. 
Yeah, for podcasting. iMovie, for, but for podcasting. <laughs> well, that's just iMovie. <laughs> it's what yeah. <laughs> iMovie, but for audio, why don't you just use iMovie? Oh, right. <laughs> that's worked pretty well for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very visual. So uh, how much time do you have? Like, do you uh, have I'm pretty flexible. My babysitter's okay. here till four. So. <laughs> Oh, right, right. Uh, six, I need some man. time to work on an illustration. Yeah, That's right. Due, but um, and right out of the gate, we have a four-hour podcast. Because <laughs> my everybody pod- loves that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, uh, Neil Brennan. Uh, I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, he wrote with uh, Dave Chappelle on uh, uh, Chappelle Show and some, mm. you know, lifelong friends that that sort of thing. He has a podcast. I think he does like one a week and they run uh, an hour to 90 minutes. Yeah. I don't think he does his own wow. editing, but he kicks out mm-hmm. one. It's just him and another girl and they just get together. And yeah, these, these days it usually is about race and diversity and things like that. Yeah. But you could see where that could go. I mean, skinny white guy and he's hanging out with the Chappelle crowd. So right. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some, not drama, not drama, but you know, uh, discussion, I guess yeah, you'd say. Intrigue. <laughs> yeah. And we can also do, we can always do two episodes of this. We'll have you back on later. Yeah. We don't want to squeeze all the juice out in one episode. <laughs> so why does diversity and representation media matter so much to you? And I know we've kind of gone over it yeah. uh, um, a little but bit. I think I, re- I sent that to you before all the happening, all like the George Floyd stuff really yeah. came up. I think it was like just before that. So it's kind of ironic that here we are again. And it's what, like you said, it's what everybody's talking about now. Um, that's exactly, you know, why we need to keep talking about it. And I think part of the discussion is visual. I mean, you know, that's where visual media, TV, film, you know, shows anything comes into play is because, you know, people are very visual. And when, you know, if there's a hope that life can imitate art, you know, there is kind of a big, I don't know if you would call it a responsibility or just um, a power, a potency that visual media has, uh, especially with the, the size of audiences that mm-hmm. can be reached through it, you know, to kind of lead the way and, you know, feature a wildly diverse cast that looks different than what most people would see when they walk out their doors, when they go to the office, when they go to school, it looks different, but, you know, what if that's just the norm? You know, everybody kind of interacting with each other together in this, it's what's, um, you know, a fictional world, but I think there is a a potency to seeing that in your entertainment, whether it's comedy or drama or whatever, and people beginning to even subconsciously accept or want to see that in their everyday lives and say, well, why doesn't my world look like that? That's kind of cool. You know, that could be the normal and maybe, you know, maybe ha- cause people to open their eyes and change perspectives right. a little bit. Is it a perfect tool for that? No, you know, there's a lot, obviously real life work has to get done. But again, like I do think that life can imitate art in a lot of ways. Mm. And, and I think that it is a very powerful tool that needs, <laughs> you know, if I, I was thinking the other day, if I went back to my graduate school program, which is it's called MFA in visual narrative at the School of Visual Arts. And I had to talk to the students the year before they worked on their thesis stories, like in the summer before, while they were kind of developing the ideas, I would be like, change your stories now. Yeah. Like whatever you're doing, the sci-fi stuff, it's a little out there. (laughs) Like that's different when it's aliens and stuff like that. But like whatever story you're writing, like change it. Yeah. You don't have any characters of color, any, you know, LGBTQ, like someone who's not straight, white, male or female, whatever, like change your story now, mm-hmm. even if you don't want to, because honey, it's time. <laughs> it's yeah. past time. Well, like, it's, make it's yourself past- uncomfortable with it because right. we all have to be part of the change. And I think there's an enormous responsibility upon creators to lead that, um, especially with like subconscious racism, you know? Mm-hmm. The things we see visually every day have a huge impact on that. That's one of those really matrixy things. Like you are, you're <laughs> subconsciously, you just don't know it. You're like, I could be a, you know, time, <laughs> time traveling murderer and I'm going to kill the president in four days. I have no idea it's going, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you just don't know. I'm like, right. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure that I have a good sense of, you know. Uh, to me, it's it's kind of one of those things that there, Morgan Freeman's always like, you know, there's a famous 60 Minutes interview. He's like talking to Morley Safer and you can Google this, but he, Morley Safer's like, well, how do we do this? How do we move forward? Or Morgan Freeman's like, stop talking about it. <laughs> just stop talking about it. Like, it's like, just don't even consider. And what he's really saying is like, don't even consider it just because it's kind of like quantum physics. Like, well, if I think about it, right. you know, would I do this? And then it's altering the system. You know, like, how would I treat you differently? Would I treat you differently? You know, like you have all these like, yeah. or do You're I just- overthinking it. It's yeah, exactly. uh, what do you call it? Uh, paralysis by analysis. Exactly. Kind of thing. Which, I was just reading um, an article in The Nation uh, from a black author who was saying how, you know, all of his white friends were texting him or whatever and saying, and like, like, Man, are you okay? And right. he's like, no, I've never been okay. I'm mad right. all the time. Like, welcome to my world. Like, right. and they, you know, when he, when white people say like, well, what can we do? He's like, be mad with me. Like, take some of this burden off my shoulders and right. yell at racist people you see in Starbucks saying ignorant things. Like, you know, unfollow your friends who are known racist, even if like you don't want to sacrifice the friendship or whatever, like it's time. Like you got to start getting mad at people because we yeah. are mad all the time. And like, he's, you know, he's right. It's like, just like, just got to upend your world, you know, yeah. like do things you wouldn't normally do show anger when you wouldn't normally express that feeling in public or something like that, because that's the kind of discomfort that changes things, you know, mm -hmm. and he's saying like, don't just ask me if I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm never going to be okay. <laughs> like, right. you know, go out there and be part of the change. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of going to defer again. I don't know why I'm going to Star Wars and Star Trek, but <laughs> Star Trek, there was a good diverse show. We could talk about that yeah. a little bit if we can circle back to that uh, in a little bit. But as far as the anger component, I kind of go to the Star Wars Jedi, <laughs> you know, this leads to the dark side because when you get, I mean, I know what you're saying, unfriend people, but then that, you know, that gap just gets wider and wider. Like, I know it's a bad aspect of another person, yeah. but when you start saying, I don't like that piece and I don't like that piece and I don't like that piece, we're not going to be friends anymore. Yeah. And so then you just get everybody divided into these little tribes. So yeah. from that- I think he's maybe more saying like, um, you know, voice your aggression. Um, or I'm probably, I probably just misquoted oh, yes. him there, but yeah. he was saying like, you know, be, be like, show your anger. Like if you really are angry about this, like don't sit at home and go, man, <laughs> yeah, right. what can I do as a white person? Like, well, everybody's can, gonna, gonna have their personality like my personality is kind of like i just want to do things like help other people like when a lot of this is going on um you know i have videos on like how to get started investing in the stock market or you know fitness like on my youtube channel those are two big things that i'm doing right now so i'm like i think i even put it on twitter the other day i said you know what the stock market doesn't care what color you are or if you're working out that 25 pound dumbbell also doesn't care what color you are. So you're doing, you know, fitness to kind of, you know, that leaves tension, eases your mind, okay. lifts you live longer, et cetera. You're taking care of yourself financially, you know, secular things that do affect your mood and mind right. and all that. So, you know, part, I don't want to appear fashionable, I guess is <laughs> part of it. Cause I know a lot of my friends are like, no, 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 no. Like, yeah. you, know, you know, there's, there's that back and forth of like, how do I, you know, balance. Yeah. And I, and I feel the same way. I haven't, well, part of it is, you know, I feel kind of guilty actually, cause I haven't gone to the protests and or demonstrations and such partially because I'm, I'm pregnant and yeah. some of them have obviously turned violent and as much as I would like to be brave and go out there, I have somebody else besides myself to right. think about now and plus my husband would probably be super mad at me if I did that right. I think what my thoughts have turned to and I'm trying to like and I'm a slow thinker and I just kind of have accepted that that I need time to think about the best way for me to participate mm -hmm. sounds like an excuse but it's not I mean it's just as a creator what can I put out there that's going to help change things and I think I wish I could make another landfall right now and like maybe in a format where it's going to get shared more like, like you said, a short film or mm -hmm. TV or something like that. Um, 
you know, in a lot of ways, that's the best thing I can do is focus my energy on creating things that show the world that, you know, the, the vision of where we're hopefully are going (laughs) that shows a difference and hopefully makes a difference in the way people, you know, in systemic and subconscious things that are really what's poisoning us right now. But I'm still thinking and, you know, I feel a little bit, like I said, my hands are tied because I'm pregnant, <laughs> like early yeah. pregnancy. Plus I'm, I'm sometimes too sick to leave the house. <laughs> right. Part of first trimester. You know, I think it's okay to stop and think too. Like you said, sure. like my instinct as a slow thinker is to avoid the trend and mm-hmm. stop and figure out what my best place is using my skills. You know, it's slower than most people people respond, at least what we see in the news is like the immediate response, Oh yeah, which is one wave of things that need to happen. But there's also, I think that after like when the news dies, when the news cycle dies down and we moved on to the, like back to COVID or whatever thing happens next and it's forgotten about, you know, like when a giant hurricane hits Puerto Rico, we talk about it for a week and then forget that there's still an island of people there that don't have electricity. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing. It's like, there's also a very big need for a second and third wave and forever wave (laughs) of, of action of like real action where you don't forget. That's the world we live in where something happens in Malaysia and in 45 seconds, people around the world could know that it happened. Yeah. So it seems like, Oh, the world's just getting worse. It's like, no, the world, everybody's this far away from each other. So everything that happens, it's like, uh, that happened. And uh, yeah, that you happened. hear about and, everything. And it's right then. So I think that's part of it. I think part of it is perception. I think the key is going to be like repetition of the message after all the protests have died down. Is that maintaining the message when people have their news feeds have gone on to other things, which mm-hmm. takes about five seconds, like you said, these right. days. Exactly. We have to get off of Twitter and Instagram and things that hold our attention with scrolls of nothingness Drama. and like well, uh, create things that are going to last and right. keep the conversation going well, in the way that, you, you know, uses your skill set the best, you know, and makes the most impact. So mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, that's my slow thinker. <laughs> It's okay to stop and think like, how am I going to, what can I really do that is the best use of my skills that's going to make a bit, the biggest difference yeah. if that's what you want to do. It's kind of kind of like the media is just, uh, you know, shooting things in there at you. Like the yeah. one example that I thought of was the deal going on with, uh, was it Bubba Wallace? Is that the NASCAR driver? The yeah, guy, that with the noose in the garage. Right. Yeah. And I looked into that a little bit because they said they were going to investigate it. And there was a website because I'd heard about it. Um, evidently, in the garages to pull the garage door down, they're little tiny. Then they look like nooses, like everyone has a little tiny knot. It's not actually a knot. It's a different type of knot that doesn't tighten. It just forms a loop so you can grab that loop and pull the door down. And somebody posted a video saying, here's a shot of this door and it has the little noose on it. And then here's another shot where it had just broken off, like the rope broke. So then you're like, what, you know, but it seems like the story they've just run with is just made it racial versus, I don't know. I I don't know what happened. You know, I want to know what, I kind of, and I guess in the end, it really doesn't matter, it, you know, what happened, so to speak, um, because I can't really do anything about it. But I, I want to know from a standpoint of, okay, is this another case of the media? Just, oh, great story. Let's run with that. Yeah. And actually, he's, he's you know, become a little bit of a poster child. And I'm sure there's been some turmoil from him uh, just because everything's so incendiary. And all it really was was like, hey, man. It's just all these other garages have that same deal and it broke off. Yeah. That's all there is. And the media for sure is definitely guilty of um, jumping to conclusions. (laughs) Right. We know that we know that. And I think people's ability to, to kind of stand back and say, okay, what's, what are the details of this story? Whatever Mm -hmm. it happens to be like, you know, again, it's the attention span. It's the, the micro blogs and the, and news feeds you know becoming the first thing people look at in the morning and it's it's part confirmation bias but it's also um just 
reading it like we have this habit now of reading a headline and going you're like mm-hmm. a, making a snap judgment and moving on yeah. because there's more headlines to look at yeah. we've lost like the ability to focus and the the attention span to to think of, that you need to think about things critically and exactly. it's really dangerous i think and i don't know is there a solution to that like is that something that's going to change are people going to you know how you know is social media going to be around forever and this is just mm-hmm part of what we have to adapt to or you know i don't know if there's a solution to the attention deficit problems right. <laughs> that social media causes and but it has terrible consequences sure. and it has good things too sure. people know more about more things that are happening around the world people know things faster when it's an urgent situation mm-hmm. so that the, the power you know it's it's the double edged sword of right. that's wielding whole- wielding I- it in a We'll yeah, put that down for the next podcast <laughs> yeah. episode too. The power of social media in today's society. Um, I can't even do, I can't do Twitter because it oh, yeah. makes my anxiety light up too much yeah, and I just can't do it. But I do Instagram. It's a little easier on the mind. <laughs> Plus I'm an artist, so I kind of have to. Yeah, we'll put that down for episode two one day. We'll, we'll get on and discuss that. <laughs> I'll spin back to one thing here, the Star Trek thing. Like right. that, that to me is a great example. There are so many firsts in that and so diversity in the cast and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think sci-fi that, actually in general does a good job of, of a di- you know, taking like differences and things we're uncomfortable mm-hmm. with or not used to or don't understand. And like, I mean, that's part of the story. That's part of the genre. So I think it, it can actually be a really useful tool. But sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But no, no, no. I, yeah, I see a lot of value in what sci-fi offers um, because it also has that layer of removal from mm-hmm. reality where people can kind of deal with difficult topics in a way that's more indirect and so they don't feel like assaulted or not being very eloquent on that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I was going to say Star Trek is like the, you know, you tell the story and it's a mirror and at the end of it and you're like, mm-hmm. that's you. And you're like, oh. <gasps> That is me, you know. Like they had the, the there was that episode where they had the alien and one side was black and the other side was white, and then the opposite ones that they're having the war with, the other side was white and the other side was black. And of course, you're like, okay, I I see what you're doing there. I mean, that's kind of on the nose with it. Yeah. But a lot of things are like, no, that's you. And you're like, oh, you're yeah. right. You know, the monster, yes, she was of- just protecting her eggs. She wasn't a monster at all. <laughs> That's another episode, you know, and again, right. the fanboys will be like, yep, yep. I know exactly what you're right. <laughs> There's a lot more leeway there to play with themes and not worry about um, offending people, I think, or scaring people away because, you know, it's, it's fiction. It's, it's total fiction, you know, it's not our world necessarily. And so there's just a layer of safety that people feel, I think, watching and thinking about topics that come up in sci-fi that mm-hmm. i think it's a you know it's a powerful tool yeah well sure you can relate to some things but other things are like new and so there's yeah. a, you know you kind of mix both of those uh, mm-hmm. elements back there it, yeah it's it's kind of like a back to the cooking parallel <laughs> yeah like it's another art cookies cooking is <laughs> art and TV and science are kind of like the same thing. It's like, you got to have your ingredients and then you've got an overall flavor feel where, uh, you know, Star Trek, they, they did that quite well and, and uh, put it together. Well, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of the, the phrase I was going to, uh, now that the moment has slipped me. Um, but yeah, I was going to make that parallel to that somehow. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Next like, episode, where right? <laughs> where is that going with that? All right. Well, mm-hmm. I don't want to, like I say, squeeze all the juice on this and I'm going to have to edit this down. So the longer and longer it gets, uh, right. <laughs> very, very busy, too busy. And I've recently started investing and stuff. Yeah. You know, but you Before I forget, I live in color, the mm-hmm. sketch comedy show, because mm-hmm. that was like, I think that was the genesis, like for genesis point for everything creative I do is like, I used to love that show so much and I was too young to really understand a lot of it, but I just loved it. And part mm-hmm. of it was the diversity that was there naturally, just the boldness and the brightness of it and the, the energy behind it. So this is where all this is coming from. <laughs> this right? little sketch comedy show from the 80s or 90s, I guess. Well, thank you for listening to that. Pretty much our inaugural interview on the Rob Log. If you would like to see those projects that we mentioned in the podcast, 
simply check the show notes and there's a link to this video on YouTube and all the links to the projects and factoids we talked about are there. Give me a subscribe, thanks for listening, and watch out for Christina on an upcoming episode number two. I'm sure she'll be back. Thank you.